Today's scripture is Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 15. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the work gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on man. He has made everything beautiful in his time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. Yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for men than to be happy and do good while they live, that everyone may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all his toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that men will revere Him. Whatever is has already been, and what will be has been for before, and God will call the past to account. Amen. I used to believe that the children of God must be protected by God, safe from all the hardships and problems that we normal people experience. You know, they should always be healthy, they should always be wealthy, and they should always be strong, both physically and mentally. I used to think that is how children of God must be. You know, because we know that God is good and God is almighty, right? Then shouldn't the children of God must be same, different from normal people? So when I realized that these people, these great people, faithful people, written in the Bible, had to go through so many difficulties and hardships in their lives, like us, sometimes even worse, I could not understand why. You know, people like Abraham, Abraham had to go through this unimaginable uh, crisis where God would ask him to, you know, sacrifice his own son. The son who was conceived so difficultly, you know, and Joseph. Talk about Joseph. Joseph was uh, betrayed by his own brothers. His own brothers tried to kill him. He was sold to Egypt as slave. He went to the jail. All the hardships in his life, just one of the hardships that he experienced, if you experience in your life, you're going to consider yourself to be very unlucky, right? What about David, King David, the greatest king of Israelites? David started as a hero, right? Defeating a giant, becoming the general of the Israelite people. You know, when you become a hero, and also a powerful figure in a, uh, a country or nation, you're thought to be, you know, abundant, right? But that didn't happen to David. His own king tried to kill him several times. He had to leave his own home, his own country, his own nation, and he had to, you know, be a, a, a group of, uh, form a group of people who just go around in nations. 
he had to work as a mercenary. What about Paul, one of the greatest apostles who uh, founded so many churches in Asia? Did he have always have happy times, great times? No. He was beaten by people almost to the death. He was jailed. His own churches went against him. He had so many problems. He also had terminal illness. So these people who are considered to be great in the history of our Christianity, not only they are blessed with positive things in their lives, but with things that we consider negative things. Why would God let them have such negative experiences, negative events in their lives? We can find that answer in today's scripture. In verse 1, the author of uh, Ecclesiastes, who is believed to be Solomon, uh, people believe that Ecclesiastes was written by Solomon. Can we uh, open our Bible and read uh, verse 1 together? Let us re read uh, verse 1 together. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Under heaven, which means everything that surrounds us on this planet. There is a time for everything. Everything happens for a reason. Nothing that happens in our lives are happening just out of luck. It is there. It happens because it is the right time for us to experience that event. It is the season of that thing that we which experience in our lives. However, what's surprising is that these things that we consider to be very negative are also included. Like the things, you know, to, to die. Extreme negative things. When you die, everything ends, right? Time to die, time to kill, time to tear down. Time to weep, time to scatter, time to give up, time to tear, and even time to hate, and time for war. All these things, these are the things that we consider to be negative, very negative, and things that we want to avoid, things that we want to run away from things that might break us down when we experience in our lives are also included in the things that are right in time. They are listed as part of our lives. What's going on here? And not only that, when you see verse 14, the author says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. God has made everything beautiful in its time, including all these things, all these things that we consider negative. He made all of those things in time and beautiful. You know, through this wisdom, we can realize a very important lesson. That as the children of God, that we must remember and we must realize the important wisdom is that there are no such things as negative things in our lives. There are no such things as meaningless events in our lives. Everything that happens in our lives are according to each time. They are not to be avoided, but to be embraced. They are not to be disregarded, but to be regarded as meaningful to our lives. Everything that happens in our lives, although we may not see it, although we may not see them as beautiful or meaningful, through God's eye, all these events and seeing as whole, it's beautiful. We may not believe it, 
We may try to avoid it when we experience these things that we consider or others consider to be negative. We may see that we are being uh, forsaken. Sometimes you may even feel that you are uh, left behind, alone. The God is not looking up on you. What's happening actually is that God is looking at you with lovely eye, proclaiming you're beautiful. Do you know what anamorphic art is? Sometimes it is also called perceptual art. Uh, it is a, a modern art style of creating an image that can only be meaningful or beautiful when uh, viewed at a certain direction. Let me give you an example. Like that. This is called uh, anamorphic art or perceptual art. So when you look at it in a, a different view, this is a series of pieces that means nothing, sometimes even ugly. You know, you look at it. These are the uh, collection of trashes, the simple things that you can find in our daily lives, like plastic, tra uh, tray, a fork, piece of paper, or tube, or uh, steel pieces that falls out of you know furniture or anything. These are all connected and hang in a position precisely. But when you're looking in different view, it means nothing. Just chaotic, you know. But when you look at it the correct direction, it becomes a beautiful piece. I think this is a perfect representation of our lives. All the things that we face in our lives, all the events that we experience in our lives, Although we do not see the point why it's there and why it's happening, they are all required to form a beautiful piece called me. Beautiful piece called Chejeo. Beautiful piece called your name in code. These are all required. We just can't see it. We just, we're not seeing at the right direction. Why? Because the author also says, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. We are not capable of seeing from the beginning to an end. We revere the foreverness, right? We want to be everlasting. But we do not have the capability to see the everlasting. until we are told how to. We ourselves cannot see it. We don't know where to look. We are only focusing on one event, one piece. In that perceptual art, when you look at just one piece, you will never realize what's going on. What is this? It's just a piece of a paper. And if you take out one piece or pieces, or if you avoid something to be added into that whole piece, where they should be, that beautiful piece becomes incomplete. And all as a whole, it becomes meaningless. Not, sing, not even a single piece must not be left out. To form a beautiful piece called yourself, to form a beautiful piece called chejeo, one piece, even single piece, must not, must not be left out. Every piece must be considered precious. If you lost someone in your life, could be your friend, could, could be one of your uh, family member, you may think it is uh, some kind of event that shouldn't have happened, event that should have been avoided, but actually you are here as a person, you have grown into a person that you are right now because of that event. 
Without that event, you won't be here. Thus, nothing is meaningless, nothing is negative in our lives. God never told us that what's happening in our lives are negative. God never said that. It's not in the Bible. Great people in the Bible knew this wisdom. Somehow they realized that what's happening in their lives, whether good or bad, they are there for them. That is the will of God. They knew that they can't see the whole picture because they realized they're not capable of it. But they knew that God can see the whole picture. All the hardships, all the crises that happen in their life, people like David, people like Joseph, people like uh, Paul, all the crises and hardships that happened in their life can, could not affect them. They did not become disappointed or lose faith, no. They did not try to avoid them or run from them, like Joseph. He didn't run from what's happening to him. When his brothers tried to kill him, did he fight back? No. He was the youngest, strongest. He could have just run away from him and from them when they uh, tried to uh, kill him. When he was thrown into the pit, when people uh, picked him up and uh, bring him as a slave, he could have escaped, but he didn't. When he was in uh, uh, Egypt, became the, the manager of the house of the guard, the captain of, captain of the guard for uh, Egyptian King Pharaoh, he had all the power and resources. If he wanted, he could have escaped with all the wealth that he was uh, controlling. He could have uh, used his power against the captain of the Egypt, fool him, you know, trick him, and gain some more power and wealth, but he didn't. When uh, he was uh, tricked against his master's wife, he didn't uh, try to explain himself, no. He was about to be thrown into the jail, but he didn't avoid it. He didn't fight back. He just accepted it. Why? Because he was fool? No. Because he knew these events are a part of God's will. Because he had a dream, right? He saw the dream of one day he will be praised by his brothers and his own parents. He was not particularly uh, uh, targeting toward becoming a powerful figure in his family, but he knew this dream is the vision of God. He knew until he realized this vision, he's not going to be harmed. Of course, he's going to experience all these negative things in his life, but he never considered these events to be negative or set back. That's why he didn't fight back. He just accepted it. He, find, he found it meaningful. He found these events as his chance to grow up more. Actually, because he had all these negative things in his life, he was capable of becoming the prime minister of Egypt. If he didn't have all these events, all these experiences, even if Pharaoh appointed him as a prime minister of Egypt, he couldn't have handled it. He couldn't have talents to do it. He couldn't have experiences to do it. But he has all those experiences being the manager of the household, being the manager of, uh, of the jail, meeting so many people, influential people, even the people who are criminals, he was able to attain all those required skills to become the prime minister of Egypt. So he lived his life as a meaningful life. This simple yet deep understanding of God's wisdom allowed all these great people in the Bible to make miracles and wonders. This is why they are great. 
not because there are some uh, uh, superhero that we see in the movies with some kind of exceptional powers. No, they are same people like us. They had this profound wisdom in their uh, spirit, in their heart. So are you in times where you think you cannot endure? Do you think you are having troubles that you want to run away from? Or are you burdened with tasks that you feel that you cannot succeed? You feel like you are going to fail? Are you having sickness that weakens your body every day? Terminal illnesses? Change your point of view with this wisdom. See them not as something to be feared, avoided, or ignored. Don't waste your time praying every day, you know, don't make these things to happen to me, to my family. Instead, pray to God, give thanks to God for all those things happening in your life. Embrace it, accept it, and welcome it. Live day, this day, this day, live this day as a meaningful day, no matter what happens. Because God sees you as a beautiful child, you know, your life as a whole. No matter what happens today, no matter what happened yesterday, no matter what will happen tomorrow, as a whole, as a person, you are a beautiful child. Today is beautiful just like yesterday. Tomorrow will be beautiful, just like today. And just like today, you will be beautiful tomorrow. Because you are the beautiful piece of art. Praise the Lord who have created us, who we are, just the way we are. Pray to God that we are here right now, being able to worship Him being able to listen to this wisdom, being able to understand how we might look our lives. Let us pray.